Aloha, and welcome to the Condo Insider Show, where we discuss all things pertaining to condo living. Um, today, we are going to be discussing the consequences of uh, not adhering to your, your governing documents. I'm your host today, Cheryl Franklin, and today, Jane Sugimura and I will be discussing those consequences. Many of you are familiar with Jane. Uh, she is an industry expert, and so we're just gonna dive right in. Hi, Jane. Hi, Cheryl. How are you? Fine. Good, good, good. So let's talk about some of the consequences. Um, what prompted uh, the show was I've, you know, I've experienced instances where uh, properties move from one management company to the next. And in particular, uh, a conversation that I was having recently, the association did not have an annual meeting for years. And I just thought, you know, that's unacceptable. And that's a, an, an example of um, not adhering to your governing documents. So I yeah, think yeah. all your, go you know, your governing documents, and that includes your declaration, your bylaws, your house rules, or any uh, policies or resolutions that the board you know, has adopted over the years. And, you know, all governing documents call for an annual meeting of the association. And, you know, that's when the owners get, you know, a chance to basically participate in, in, in this overall uh, plan, you know, for, for the um, uh, project. And, you know, if you don't have an annual meeting, uh, there's a lot of consequences. Uh, number one, can't choose directors or officers. That means that the old board and the old officers continue to uh, run the show. Um, uh, and, you know, in, in a lot of places, that's not a good thing, uh, you, you know, because the owners have a, have a right under their governing documents every year to elect officers. And, you know, usually on a condominium, there are nine board members. Mm -hmm. and, and, and typically what it is is they have three-year terms and it's staggered. So you have three people running every year. Mm -hmm. So you always have six people who are like part of the old uh, you know, who are carryovers and three incumbents, people. yeah, income, you know, so, mm -hmm. so, 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 you know, so if you don't have the board meeting, annual board meeting, then you don't have election of officers or directors. And there's this thing that they do at every annual meeting. It's a rollover resolution for IRS purposes. In other words, because at the end of the year, most associations have some extra money left over. And if you don't, do the rollover resolution that says we, you know, we resolve that we take this extra money and we're going to roll it over and use it to pay expenses for the next year. That money is taxable. Right. Income, yeah. Right. Yeah. And so if they, you don't do the rollover, then I guess you have a tax liability because, uh, you know, you're supposed to pay taxes on that amount. And I guess if you're a small uh, association, it might not be significant, but, you know, if the IRS wants to come after you, they can. Absolutely. And so you know, that's something. And then management, uh, the, the, usually the, uh, the declarations or the, the um, statute, 514B, says at the annual meeting, you will confirm who your managing agent is. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have an annual meeting, the old managing agent, or, you know, this is a property management company like Hawaiiana, Touchstone, Associate, right? They continue they automatically roll over. And right. there might be some people in the building who are upset with the management, you know, of, of the building and they maybe wanted a new manager. Yeah. yeah. Right? And they don't get that opportunity because there's no annual meeting. Yeah, well it happens a, a little too often, but let's let's take a step back and let's talk about some of those governing documents and where and what they uh, stipulate. Uh, for example, the bylaws and the declaration and things like that. Well, and, the, de the declaration is the document that creates the condominium and you know mm -hmm. the, the condominium uh, is created by statute, which means that it doesn't exist until you have a declaration. Mm -hmm. And the declaration is the one that basically says this is our kind of opinion. It is a one-story building. It has 30 floors. And on each floor, we have 10 units. And we have this many two bedrooms, and this many one bedroom, and this many three bedrooms. And these are our common elements. And they list all the common elements. All the common and elements, all the limited, the limited common, common, common elements. elements yeah. And they list all the limited common elements. So if, you're, if there's an issue about you know, what is your condominium, you say, look at the declaration. That tells you what our condominium is. And that gets registered 
filed with the state of Hawaii. It gets recorded with the DCCA, the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs. And when that happens, the doc, uh, the condominium is created. Right. And in it, it, it basically tells you the rules. It says that uh, the, uh, the management of the condominium is to be done by a board of directors. Yep. And a board of directors shall, mandatory, shall hire, because board, boards of directors, you're talking about maybe a 30 story building. And you know, and, and your board of directors are volunteer, I'll pay volunteer owners. They have they don't have a clue on how to manage this building. So right. how are they gonna how are they gonna manage it, right? Yeah, the, so that the, that lends itself to the bylaws, which right. is yeah, what's, declaration saying yeah. you shall hire a professional management company. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones who do the day to day. They hire your help, they hire your contractors, and uh, you know, they they make sure that everything runs, they make sure the bills get paid, and then your bylaws basically tell you how do you operate this entity mm -hmm. has the rules. Right. How do you elect your officers? How do you elect your board? And what do the board? What does the board do? What do the officers do? When do you have your annual meetings? And it says you have to have annual meetings. And um, and it, 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 the, the, this is your roadmap that tells you how to do the day to day. Right. And, and and then you have your house rules, which are rules that the, um, the board. Uh, prom you know, develops and establishes and then circulates to all the owners and all the owners, you know, have to comply with these rules and regulations called house rules and regulations. And sometimes, you know, the, the board comes up with design criteria. In other words, if you right. want to fix your apartment, uh, you want to enclose your lanai, this is how you do it. And, and, and you know, they all have this, the standard terms, you have to have licensed contractors and if it requires a permit, you got to comply with all city and county rules. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and, and but you know, if you want to do, uh, put in a floor, these other specs, this is how, you know, you have to put in an, uh, a, a padding and it has to be this thick and it has to have these many requirements. Right. And if you want to put in carpet, this is what you do. And if you want to put in tile, this is what you do. Yeah. You know, but some, you know, and some buildings have committees that establish, yeah. yeah. Establish these design criteria as to what you can do in your unit. And, um, and you know, so there are all these, you know, different rules that the board will review and adopt, and then it, it, it affects everybody who lives in the building. Yeah, so let's talk about when that goes awry. First of all, yeah. everyone, every owner receives a copy of their governing document. Yes, they do, when they buy their unit. When they buy their unit. And if they don't read it or they lose it, they have access to uh, obtaining their governing, a copy from and the- many now, now many associations have online access. Right. Right, they have right. websites. And I, I know a lot of the management companies uh, have websites or they, uh, they will help you set up your own website and one of the things that they put on this website are your governing documents. Right. Your declaration, all the amendments, your bylaws, and all any amendments, your house rules, your design rules, any type of rules you got. Mm -hmm. Right? They put them so the information, the on yeah. the website. It's all it's all there. So in lieu of the fact that all the information is there, all of the governing documents are there that you should adhere to, let's talk about some of the consequences um, when you do not adhere to those governing documents in the case that we're speaking of, where they are not conducting annual meetings. Um, let's talk about some of the consequences when you don't do that and your ownership kind of takes a look at these things and they decide to do something about it. Well, in the, dra in the most drastic case, and I can I tell you this without naming the condominium, there is a condominium in town and the board president uh, kind of ran it like his own fiefdom, you know, like he was king. Oh. This condominium, and he owned several units in it, uh, and he was acting as own property manager. But he was the board president for like 18, 19 years. Oh, and and and, and there was this huge lawsuit that um, got generated, and uh, he ended up uh, the association lost, ended up with a whole lot of attorneys' fees, and naturally the owners had to pay for this. They, they had to, right, and right. they were not. Happy. Yeah. And you got one owner who had Going. an assumption to organize and, and and they went three years without any 
the annual meeting and I was told there were no board meetings, no monthly board meetings either. So there were, he was just running it. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> the uh, owner uh, basically took over. He managed to get an annual meeting run and he got himself elected as president. To kind of straighten things out. And, and he hired a lawyer who was Terry Revere, who, you know, all, <laughs> yeah. No. And Terry went after the yeah. board president and uh, the management company. And at that, in that instance, the uh, previous president becomes personally, personally liable. liable. And there's something called fiduciary duty, mm -hmm. and fiduciary duty is a is a legal is a legal concept, and it means that if you're you know in a it's a it, you're in a, a situation of trust. If you're the fiduciary, and let's say. And, and in, in, a con, in condo land, the board has a fiduciary duty to the association. And you know, that's the, the, the group. The association means the unit owners as a group. I don't owe, if I'm the board member, I don't owe fiduciary duty to you if you're a unit owner, but right. I owe it to you if you're part of the association. So if I do something to screw up something that affects the, let's say the maintenance fees, Right, that how we set the maintenance fees is a board function because we do the budget. And, but if I screw that up so that all of a sudden there's this huge debt, and the only way you pay the debt is you go after the unit owners and say, okay, now we have to do a special assessment because we don't have enough money in the treasury. Uh, problematic, right? Extremely problematic. And so that, if you're if you're a unit owner, you're going to be really angry at the upset. board. Upset, yeah. Right? You're going to yeah. be upset because it's a special assessment. It's something extra that you have to pay on top of the maintenance fees that you're already obligated to pay. Right. And so that's how a, a, so a condominium functions. They, they collect maintenance fees from everybody. And if there's not enough money, you gotta do a special assessment. And so in, in this case, you know, if you do a special assessment uh, and you know, that would affect everybody in the, in the, in the um, uh, building. And in that sense, the board owes a fiduciary duty to everybody to make sure that when that happens, it is happening for the right reasons. It's right. For something that was catastrophic. Let's say uh, you, you thought you were taking care of your building and your pipes broke. Right. You know, and, and, it, and you hire the engineer and the engineer says, oh, you got to replace all your pipes. Yeah. Well, you know, that's unexpected. And you don't have the money in the reserves. So you've got to do a special assessment. Yeah. I mean, that's nobody's fault. I right. Mean, you know, you, you, people are always looking for a wow, while whose fault is how come you didn't tell us why didn't you plan for this yeah and most of us are not clairvoyant we, well yeah we, we do our best we do our best because you know the board is charged with taking care of the building and you do your best and, and if you do your best then you can't be personally liable but exactly. if you don't do your best and you and, and if you and and, and and you know to when i teach the class on fiduciary duty i tell people you know it's really easy if you're a board member most board members we know have no clue. Right. They are <laughs> unpaid volunteers. Yeah. And they live in the building. They're owners. Yeah. And they have, they, they have a stake in them. They care about the building. That's why they're on the board. Yeah. But we know that they're not engineers and lawyers right. and plumbers and things like that. Right. Right. So if you got a plumbing problem, what do you do? The business judgment rule says we know you don't have a clue. You hire you a plumber. You hire a plumber. If you Call have in the experts. Problems, and yeah. you hire a, an attorney. Yeah. And if you have a financial problem, you hire a CPA. Yep. And you pay them for their written opinion. Right. How do we fix this? And then How you're protected. And then and you're then protected. You, 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 take, you, you can follow their opinion. And because they have, you know, error yeah. and omission, if they have, they give you the wrong information or the wrong opinion and you follow it, yeah. you are not liable. And that's All the right. business judgment rule. All right. I'm getting a message. This is a great time for a break. Uh, lots more to talk about. Please come back and join us. Thank you. Rusty Kamori, host of Beyond the Lines. I have a TV show based on my book, which is also called Beyond the Lines. And it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and building winning teams. We are having a fun drive for ThinkTech Hawaii. 
And please, 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 please help us keep these shows going. Please go on our website, thinktechhawaii.com, to donate. Thank you. Aloha, and thank you for returning. Um, we're going to just continue the conversation with Jane here. I believe before the break, um, Jane, you were speaking to some of the consequences of not adhering um, to your governing documents, and we'll just continue down that line. Um, I just want to ask a quick question here. I know that in the instance where they're not having annual meetings, they're not uh, adhering to their bylaws, but they're making decisions or one board member, in this case, a president, is making all the decisions. Those decisions can be challenged. Yes, they can. Or and are they even valid? They can They can be challenged. That's why, you know, board members, you know, have to, you know, remember that they have a fiduciary duty. When they make a decision, they're making a decision on behalf of every member of the association. So they have to think, what is, what? when I make a decision, it's got to be for the best interest of the group. And, 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 and if you don't know, the, you know, the statute says you use the business judgment rule, you hire an expert. And the expert, you say, well, this is the issue. How do I solve the problem? How do I address it? Okay, you get a written opinion, and then as a board, you discuss it. And if, if, if everybody agrees that you follow what the consultant says, then fine, you make, that's how you make your decision. In other words, you can't just pull stuff out of thin air. You can't decide, oh, I want to I wanna do this job with my Uncle Joe, who's a right, plumber, right. Right? who's not a licensed plumber, but yeah, he, yeah. he's been doing it for years, and so yeah, he knows what he's doing. You don't do, you don't make decisions like that because first of all, you know, they're not based on the business judgment rule. You're using an unlicensed plumber to do repairs on a building that doesn't really belong to you. It belongs to everybody in the building. So that's why when you make a decision, you have to make sure that it's got to be good for everybody and you have to use licensed contractors. Right. And you have to, uh, and, and the repairs that you do, you have to make sure that an expert has looked at it and the attorney has looked at the contract and maybe the CPA has looked at the finances. You have to, all, all these consultants look at this and say, oh yeah, this will work. And then then if, if that decision turns out to be wrong, all those experts have errors and omissions, go ahead and sue them, but you are not liable. Right. You, but but if, if you don't do that and you decide, I'm going to do it by myself because I know better. <laughs> you know, I, I know, uh, you know, I'm the king and I know everything and I'm going to do it this way. And if you screw up, you can be personally liable. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, people say, you know, that, well, I'm on the board and there's D&O insurance, mm -hmm. right? That's directors and officers right. insurance. But what does that do? What directors and, uh, and officers insurance does, which, and most condos have it. It means that if you get sued or somebody makes a claim, the insurance company has to come in and defend. It doesn't mean that you're off the hook, right? Because if they, if they, you know, if, if if it turns out that you screwed up and the way you made your decision was not supported by the business judgment rule or by any solid, you know, basis, you could be held personally liable. Yeah. Because. Because, you know, because number one, you have a fiduciary duty. You have an obligation to follow the business judgment rule. If you didn't follow the, the decision-making processes that are in place that you should be following and you just make it on your own and something bad happens. Good. And rather, why, why should the association, meaning all of the members who live there, pay for your mistake? Right. They'll right. come after you. Yeah, and right. that's what's happening with this association that didn't have any meetings for three years. Well, even starting right there, if you're not having meetings, you're not even documenting the decisions right. to demonstrate that you're doing your due diligence. You're right. not. You're basically a lone ranger, and that's a two-edged sword. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and that's what happened. And in that case, the owners rebelled. They got. It, it, there's a certain point you can probably do this, but it, at some point you're going to get somebody so angry, maybe yeah, because they're paying out of their pocket, right? And they're saying, right. "Why am I doing this? Right. This is crazy, and I'm going to put a stop to it." Right. And that's what usually does it. And 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 you know, and now you have litigation with this condo who had no board meetings or annual meetings for three years, and they're going after the board president for you know personal liability. 
And they should, and yeah. they should. And I'd venture to say that in doing so, I would, um, I can only assume that that means that he made all the decisions regarding the budget, right? right. And uh, the maintenance fees and things like that. So they're probably not fiscally stable, right? right? Or fiscally sound. And so they have to go back and try to repair all that damage to make sure that they're, they're planning right. and adhering to their fiduciary duty. So you basically need an entire new board because you haven't had your meeting in, in a couple of years, which you know, I don't even know how you do that, but it's it's being done, unfortunately. Right, so. and, and they're little by little, they're you know they're clawing their way back to a, yeah. a normal level yeah. where where things are supposed to be happen happening in a normal way, where you have monthly board meetings where the owners can come, you have annual mm -hmm. meetings where the uh, owners can uh, select their board members and their officers, and they're having you know budgets that right. are being discussed in front of the owners and approved and implemented and right. you know, they're, they're trying to claw their way back and it's going to take them time but i think they're going you know i'm i'm, I'm very sure that they're going to make it and the problem is is that you know now they've got this uh, this issue of you know trying to recover from the board president for the losses that this association incurred yeah yeah so in many cases do homeowners know where to start when there's a situation where they feel that their board has gone rogue, if you will. Um, do they even know uh, where they can go to well, they, I don't know if they, 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 they know where to go, but you know, one wonderful resource is the State of Hawaii uh, Real Estate Commission website. And I think if, and the way, you know, if you, you know, want to Google it, it's mm -hmm. Hawaii Real Estate Commission. And they have a page that talks about all the issues that if you live in a condo that you you know you it has you know a legislative uh page and that uh, you know of the new legislation how to resolve disputes uh budgets and reserves so it's all out there it's all out there see. and it's free and it's on the internet and uh -huh. so you know, anybody and, and 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 it will tell you if they get, you have a dispute with your board this is what you can do and they even on on they even have subsidized programs where, where money is paid by all condominium owners into a condominium education fund. It's been happening for 25 years. And now the state will, if you have a dispute with another owner and now you, if, if, or with the board, or if you have a board member who's mad at the other board members, you can do- That never happens. No, <laughs> but you know, you can, you can do media, evaluative mediation and the state will put, subsidize it. They will pay for it. There's money out of the, and you can go to uh, the, the uh, you know, these mediation organizations and you know, they're not free. You have retired judges who act as mediators and arbitrators and you know, their fees are anywhere from three to $400 an hour. And that's subsidized by this fund in order for you to participate in, in a dispute resolution. In yeah. other words, you got a beef with, uh, with a board member or another unit owner, or if you're a board member and you're mad at the other board members, you can go to you know this uh, the the, uh, the real estate commission and say I want to mediate this. Tell me where to go, and they'll tell you. Yeah. They, they have you know you go to the website and it tells you the, the contracts contractors that are hired by the state, and you go and say I have a dispute, and they will set you up for mediation or uh, a voluntary binding arbitration. It's just it's, that simple, huh? And, and it is paid for by the state of Hawaii. And it's, it's not taxpayer money, it's money it's, that- It's I'm sitting paying. there. Yeah that, yeah, that all of us, if you've lived in a condo, you've been paying for over 25 years. And when it started off, the, 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 the cost was something like a, a dollar and a quarter per unit every mm -hmm. other year. Every other year, yeah. As yeah, of yeah. last year, I was told it's almost ten dollars per unit every other year. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it's like up everything there. else. <laughs> but you know, and if you look at the number of condos in the state of Hawaii, I mean, you're talking millions of dollars in this fund. Right. So you know, so you know, if you have a dispute, there's money there that will get you professional assistance to try to help you resolve the issue. Well, we definitely need to get the word out on that. Yeah. Um, I it's don't on the website. Yeah, but even the accessibility to the website, like how do we really educate boards for one? Um, is there anything coming down the 
I in intend. fact, that's um, we we are now working as as we speak. There is a resolution that is circulating uh, for a, uh, to establish a task force uh, to come oh. back uh, to the next legislative session with uh, some kind of a bill that will mandate that all board members have to be educated in order to serve. In other words, uh -oh. because you know we the, the legislature and the real estate commission they've had so many complaints over the years about abusive yeah. boards yeah. and boards you know who just don't have a clue and who you know are just beating up on their owners that you know and and these are the guys who don't go to the seminars that CAI has right. or Hawaii Council or all the management companies when they do board training and it's not that. There's no resources. There's right. plenty of resources, and a lot of it is free. Like I told you, the the, the DCCA, the uh, Real Estate Commission website, is a treasure trove of information. And all you have to do is find a computer. You can go to the library, get on the computer, and just Google it and do Hawaii Real Estate Commission. Yeah. And you zoom right into this page that has all kinds of information. It even has a map of all the condos in the state, you know, where, so if you want to know where a particular condominium is, there it is. And it's all out there. have a list of every condominium that's registered with the state of Hawaii and who their contact person is. And it's usually the, the managing agent. Right, right, right. right. And yeah. so, so, you know, there is just a treasure trove of information for anything you might want. And then they have a list, they have a calendar of events. So if you want to go and be educated, they have the seminars. Some of them are free, some of them you pay for, right? But the calendar is there. And if you want to know where, where to go, you just go to the calendar. But when that bill passed, you definitely have to come back and talk about that. Right. Um, there's, there's a lot to consider with that. I think it's a great idea. Um, my only in other words, you know, in other words, you know, the, the, the concept behind it is, you know, if you make it mandatory, some of these guys who are on the board that are bullies, you know, yeah. maybe they mean they'll they, get off. They'll the get off because they don't want to, you know, sit for four hours or right. whatever and, 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 and get certified yeah. uh, as having educated, being educated, or they'll have to sit there and then when it comes time when they're sued, they can't claim they ignorance. Can't. Because, you know, but you can it, anyway. But yeah, right now they can, can claim ignorance, and the judge will mm -hmm. say, "Oh well, you're an unpaid you volunteer, your... so I'm not going to hold you liable." But they won't be able to do that once you know we make it mandatory. And and so once we make it mandatory, they don't have that excuse. They right. will be personally liable for any yeah. harm that they you know they uh, you know bring to the owners in the buildings that they're supposed to be serving. Yeah. Well, thank you. We could go on yes. and we'll continue on another show. But thank you again for joining us and please come back uh, for more discussion on everything uh, pertaining to condo living. Okay. Thank Aloha. You. Thank you.